Uh, so this is First Corinthians chapter number seven, uh, verse number twelve. I'll start from verse number twelve. Now I will speak to the rest of you, though I do not have a direct command from the Lord. If a Christian man has a wife who is not a believer, and she is willing to continue living with him, he must not leave her. And if a Christian woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to continue living with her, she must not leave him. For the Christian wife brings holiness to her marriage and the Christian husband brings holiness to his marriage. Otherwise, your children would not be holy. But now they are holy. Parenthetically, but if the husband or wife who isn't a believer insists on leaving, let them go. In such cases, the Christian husband or wife is no longer bound to the other. For God has called you to live in peace. Don't you wives realize that your husbands might be saved because of you? And don't you husbands realize that your wives might be saved because of you? Now, listen, I take take the word literally. And oh, let me just say, I, we put out a we put out a clip. Um, uh, I can't remember when we put the clip out, but I talked about uh, God literally saying uh, he is not enough. He literally didn't say he was not enough. I've, I've had so many people uh, correct me. And, and you're right. God did not literally say he is not enough. Um, by his strongest implication, he was letting you know he is not enough on earth. Okay. And, and I know to say God is not enough in any context just makes religious people. I won't even call you religious. It makes God fearing people get really, really nervous as if God's not big enough to be able to handle the intercompatibility uh, that he made between humans. It's okay. He's, he's fine. I promise you he's fine, baby. He's not jealous of his own creation. He's jealous when you try to deify something he created over the creator. So uh, let me go on record. But let me look at right in this camera. God did not literally say he is not enough. I'm aware of that. I made a mistake. I'm not taking down the post. I made it in the context of what I was saying. I was talking about uh, what he strongly implied when he said it's not good for man to be alone. What he is strongly implying is that I am not enough for man on earth. There. Make sure you clip that. Put that out. In Jesus name, maybe maybe somebody will stop playing. Okay, anyway. Now, back to this. Um, don't you, wives, don't you know that your husband might be saved because of you? And husband, don't you know that your wives might be saved because of you? Because of you. Not because of what you're trying to make them do. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Didn't see that coming, did you? So you're a believer and they're an unbeliever. Stop harassing them. They they, they love being with you. They but but you're nagging them about their faith walk. How would you feel? First of all, remember when you weren't saved. Right? This is a person you got with. You're married. Paul says it very, very clearly. Hey, don't immediately chunk the deuces to these people. They might give their life to Jesus because of you. They might be saved because of you. But it's going to have to be because of your actions. So if both of y'all used to smoke weed together and now you go to church, but they smoke weed, let them smoke their weed, man. Go to church. Get on you. Pray for, pray for them. Come home. Love on them. I know you don't like weed smoke no more. Set some boundaries. Like, hey, please don't. I don't want to contact high. Could you please go out on the balcony and smoke your blunt? You know what I mean? In a state that it's legal. So let's do that, too. I don't want nobody going to jail. Um. Uh, but but you have some work ahead of you, and I understand. I understand that y you know y you were unequally yoked, and and now you got a family, and, and you're trying to figure it out. Um, but sc sc scripture is clear that y you shouldn't automatically divorce. Now I'm gonna say something that this is gonna be, I know it's gonna be inflammatory for some. Um, if 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 it's two men and you're married, and then you give your life to Jesus. In the relationship. If it's two women and you're married and you give your life to Jesus in the relationship. Because you have no biblical grounds to support the marriage in the first place. So there's that. 
you're kind of uh, touching this this question already, so I'm going to expand a little bit more. But Sierra's wanting to know, can you touch on the different spiritual levels in marriage? Um, you mentioned how Juliet was saved at nine, and mm-hmm. they assume that you were at different spiritual levels. Can you expand on that? Yeah, so uh, Juliet gave her life to nine gave her life to Jesus at nine years old and she has never stopped walking with Jesus since nine years old. She's been very committed. I gave my life to Jesus at 20 and I came in with a lot of baggage. I came in with a lot of carnality. I came in with a lot of worldly perspectives. And so, um, uh, there, there was just, I just had a lot more hurdles and challenges, uh, to overcome in that regard than Julia did. And, um, while we were at different spiritual levels, there there wasn't a, um, it was never a, a matter of incompa- incompatibility, nor was it a matter of like incongruency, right? Where, where it was like, oh, we can't even get along because, you know, Juliet prays three hours a day and I only pray for 14 minutes a day. Like, like it's, w- when you say different spiritual levels, I don't want you to think that that means incompatibility um people have uh in the same way you're you're physiologically you have growth spurts at different points in your life and most girls mature faster than boys do physiologically um spiritually you might be growing at different paths as well but find the places of compatibility that you have with each other find the places of connectivity and you may be a person that you love reading 10 chapters a day in your bible and you go to sleep listening to the Bible on tape. and um, But don't judge your partner. Please, please, please don't judge your partner. And even, let me be even more specific, stop comparing your devotion to God to theirs. Well, I get up every morning at five and I pray for an hour and I read my Bible before I get up and go to work. This fool doesn't get out the bed until 730. I mean, he reads this like little little devotional, like my utmost to his highest. But I mean, God. It's like it's only a page. I want to go deeper. Well, you go deeper. Invite them to go deeper. Maybe they don't want to go deeper right now. Maybe they can't go deeper right now. And let's just be honest, utmost to his highest, hits different. That page is dope. Right? That little devotional is top notch. It's been around for, I think, uh, close to 100 years maybe. Utmost for his highest, maybe not 100 years. Maybe 70. I don't know. Um, I, mean, I might need to ask Siri that. Um, hey, Siri. When did Upmost for His Highest come out? Upmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers. Hold on. When did this come out? Okay. When did Oswald Oswald Chambers Right. Right. I can't type. Utmost for his nineteen thirty five. Hmm. So I was right. It was it's close to a hundred years old. Holy cow. That's pretty awesome. It's eighty nine years old, fam. It might do y'all well to read that. 1935. Wow. Anyway, uh, stop comparing yourself to your spouse as it relates to your spiritual walk and your spiritual growth. Um, They might not ever get to where you are. You might not ever get to where they are. Make sure you find common ground to where y'all can be compatible and walk and walk stuff out. Don't let the enemy divide you over your prayer life. Good Lord. Y'all going to get a divorce over who reads the Bible longer? Stop playing. 